Jean. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to ask your Ask Tom office hours for spatial maps in Oracle database. Today we'll be talking about how to create web maps using Oracle Maps JavaScript API. My name is Carol Palmer. I'm one of the product managers for Oracle Spatial and Graph. And with me here is Hong Lei Zhu, the principal member of technical staff for Oracle Spatial Maps development team. Uh, today's uh, session is primarily all about demos. A lot of you have been asking about demos. That's what we're going to focus on with just a few slides just to uh, give you some information that uh, we think is relevant. First, I want to talk to you about the new licensing model. Uh, just in case you're not familiar, as of December 5th last year, spatial features of the database no longer require spatial and graph price option. And this also holds true for graph features of the database as well as the advanced analytics option. So spatial features are included in all editions of the database. So that's all cloud database offerings, including ADB, as well as on-premises, enterprise edition, and SE2. So spatial is really a key part of the converged database strategy, you know, database for all data types, all workloads, and this is really great news because uh, you no longer have to pay for the priced option and you can take advantage of the spatial features and start playing around with it. I do want to mention, whoops, sorry, the Spatial and Graph user community, the Spatial and Graph SIG. We are part of the Analytics and Data User Community, formerly known as BWA. We are a global group. We really have a lot of fun and learn at the same time. We have partners and customers and students. Uh, we swap user story, uh, user uh, use cases, tips and tricks, talk about new enhancements. Um, and we are a major part of the Spatial and Graph Summit, which takes place in September and March of each year. We do a lot of work in that area. And you'll see in the uh, upcoming months, we'll also be doing a lot with the analytics and data tech casts that are going on. You'll see some of our customers and some of our users participating uh, in those sessions. So I'd like to just ask you to, if you, you know, we're always looking for new ideas, new perspectives, please join us. You can do that via LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, or the email account you see in the bottom. I do want to point out that the Ask Tom office hours, they were previously spatial and graph combined um, because there, there's just so much information we want to share, we've split that. So now it's spatial and maps. And at the top here, you can subscribe. This is our landing page. So you can see past sessions, past recordings that we've had. Those are already there. You can submit feedback. And you can also go there to, let, uh, to know what's coming up in the next few months in terms of tutorials or sessions. Um, you can also make suggestions if you'd like. Before we begin, some housekeeping notes. The lines are muted. Please use the Q&A box to ask questions, not chat, because a lot of people use chat. We, we really are, are, we have a lot of people monitoring the Q&A box. Other members of our product uh, management and development team are looking to, uh, to answer questions. We can't discuss bug reports or service requests. And if you post code into chat, just note that it's available to everybody. All right, so you might not want to do that. All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Hong Lei for just a few slides and then all the demos. Hong Lei, you want to go? OK, yeah. Thank you, Carol, for the uh, introduction. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Hong Lei Zhu. I'm a uh, developer and the Oracle Spatial the Map team. Uh, the slide we are seeing uh, gives us uh, the big picture about uh, Oracle Spatial. And uh, you may have seen this uh, slide before. On top, at the top row, you see there's a list of uh, deployable components. And mapping is one of those components. And we all know maps are very important. And uh, the maps are very intuitive to represent spatial data. And it's very uh, effective to illustrate spatial distributions, uh, their patterns, and also to discover uh, business-related knowledge about uh, the, uh, the data. 
Okay, so now let's zoom in a bit to look at the uh, uh, mapping component. In this slide, uh, what we see is the uh, map visualization component. And uh, on the left, it is the map with server. It is a deployable component providing mapping services. So it is a Java E application. On the right, you see the uh, map API. Uh, it is a rendering engine built on HTML5 and it displays maps in a browser. And normally, the map API are bundled together with the uh, map is server in a EAR file, so they can all be de uh, deployed into a web container. However, you can also use map API standalone without the presence of the uh, map with server. And normally, the map API interacts with the map with the server uh, to get mapping uh, services, images or data, and some others. And it could also uh, interact with external third party mapping services to bring the maps and the data as well. So that's for uh, this. Now let's uh, look at uh, today's demos we are going to go through. So on the left, we see a list of uh, demos we are going to go through. Uh, I bring, break them down into uh, four categories here for the demos. On top is a list of tile layers, followed by vector layers and then a dynamic tile layer, and then the application for geometry uh, editing and creation. So uh, there are differences between the tile layers and vector layers. We can look at them from two perspectives. From the application's perspective, uh, the tile layers are normally used as background maps, as a background drop. And on top, uh, we display vector layers. They are more uh, business related. And from another perspective, from the technical perspective, those two types are different. Tile layers, normally the tiled images are cached in a uh, map with server or a uh, map service provider server somewhere. So the map API brings in the cached tiles into the viewport of the browser. And we see the whole display, uh, but the, actually they are tiles stitched, stitched together. For the vector layer, on the other hand, the map API brings in the raw geodesic data not the images, but the map API will render the maps using the geodesic data it brings in. So that's those. For the dynamic tile layer, it is uh, different from the above. It is a tile layer because the image comes from the server side, the map with server for this specific feature. And the uh, dynamic term here, meaning the uh, tile images are generated on, on the fly, real time, upon uh, the request received by the map with server, the data is pulled out from the Oracle database and then uh, rendered according to the uh, specifications sent by the client. Once it's done, it send it to the client. So client displays the image. And you may see, so why bother to have this feature? Uh, you have the uh, the vector layer or you know the, the tile layer, they look good. But the, the advantage is 
sometimes you need real data. I mean, the uh, I mean, real-time data, the synced, not cached, like the tile layers. Uh, but sometimes the data set is very big and bring the data from the server to the client is not practical. But the server normally, the map with the server is more powerful and has a better and faster connection to the uh, Oracle database to bring large quantities of data and render that and then pass the image to the uh, client. So that's the advantage. The geometry editing is a uh, it's a just an application showing you the editing capabilities recently uh, optimized and enhanced. So uh, another thing I want to point out is uh, those demos here in the list. Uh, some of those demos, like Oracle Maps, uh, here Maps, OSM, even the offline tile layer. And some vector layer as well. They do not need a map with server in the back end, meaning the map API could work stand alone. And some others uh, do need the map with server. So just uh, have that uh, pointed out. With this, I'd like to uh, move into the demos. Okay, let me. Share my screen. Okay, here is the uh, demos on the list. On the left, there's a list of demos as you see in the uh, slide. They are the same. So. Uh, before we go into the te technical details, let me show you some uh, basic settings. And when we need a map with the server for some applications, you're going to see uh, shortly, we have those two data sources defined in the map with server. One is called MV demo for some demos and MV test is for the uh, geometry editing. So that's the uh, URL. You know, they are uh, connected to uh, the Oracle uh, database. There, that's for this part. And with this, yeah, and another thing I want to show you for the uh, background setting for this whole demo is I'm using NetBeans IDE. And this application here is deployed into this IDE embedded web container, which is Tomcat in this case. So they are deployed in this part. They don't have to deploy it together with MapVis, but for this case, I'm showing you here, uh, that's the setting. Okay, so with this, I'd like to start showing you the uh, demos. First is Oracle Maps. So the map here you see is the uh, a world map tile layer comes from Oracle Maps cloud service. And I can use my mouse to uh, zoom in and to pan the map. I can use the navigation control to do the same. It is uh, the standard uh, gestures uh, using the mouse. Uh, compared with some other uh, popular online uh, map services. Okay, so that's the map. And on top of the map, there are some decorations and the map controls. The navigation control is one of them. And there's the uh, scale bar. And also you could put your uh, copyright note here. So it's clickable, I just click it, it goes there to show you the feature. So that's the look and feel of the map. Now let's look at the source. Here is the page. You know, here is the page we see, the, the source. What it does is, the overall, the page has two parts here, the head 
and the body. And in the head, we load this uh, map API. So it's loaded from Oracle Cloud Service. So we got it there. And this JavaScript file comes from, uh, for, is for this particular demo. And followed by a JavaScript session, section here. And uh, when here, what it says is, when the document is ready, is loaded into the browser, this show map function will be invoked. And this function is defined in this tilelayer.js. It is a particular JavaScript file for this uh, demo, this particular demo we are looking at. So that's for that part. And if you look at the body, it only has one div element and its ID is map. So with this, if we look at the code, we see the show map. So it is invoked when everything is loaded into the browser. And the line here is just a set of resource path, meaning the map API needed CSS files and some other image icons will be uh, fetched from this location. The line after that is get element by ID. Look at the ID as a map. So the map the, the uh, div element defined in the body will be retrieved and assigned it to the map div variable here. And this line creates a map instance. You notice here the map div is passed into the map instance. So everything will be happening within that div element. And the map instance is created after this line. The OM, the OM is a namespace. So all of those uh, map API features once uh, loaded, they are all encapsulated in the OM namespace. The line after that creates a tile layer. And so after this, the uh, e-location tile layer instance is created. It, the default is world map from Oracle Maps Cloud Service. So we have the map instance created, the uh, tile layer instance created, and we just add the tile layer instance into the map. So pretty much we are ready to go. But before we call the map innate to show the map, we set the zoom level to one here. The default is zero, could be any other values. And after the innate, the map will be actually uh, showing on the uh, uh, viewport of the display. And there's another function call to add map controls. And you look at here, you know, each control is handled by one function in this demo. And there's a nav control, there's the uh, copyright control. Uh, we don't need to go into the details much about those uh, because you have the uh, demo code to start off. So, and it's very easy to uh, manipulate, um, edit it a little bit to fit in your needs. But to just show you how the map is created and how those controls are uh, added on top of the map. Now let's move on to the next one, custom tile layer. Custom tile layer meaning you could, in this demo, you could create your own application uh, to create your own tile layer using the data set you have, using the, uh, the map styling you prefer, and, and uh, as many layers as you wish, and then create a tile layer to serve your client. Here we, have, we see a new uh, control. We didn't see in the previous one. So this, this is a uh, built-in toolbar, and then we can just zoom in 
areas by giving specified area and also can measure distances and could also uh, create a polygon of you know area of interest and also the rectangle tool draw a rectangle circle to draw a circle And those features can be used with other map API features to do things like uh, screen digitization or filtering, you know, spatial filtering by defining a uh, feature to, uh, to filter the spatial data. So now let's look at the uh, source code. In the source code, we probably only need to pay attention here, the tile layer. See here, it uses the MV demo data source, and the tile layer defined in that data source is called demo map. And the uh, map with the server, the uh, host URL is, is here, defining the tile server URL. That's the only change we made to make this uh, uh, custom tile layer work. And uh, uh, also we added the control here, the uh, toolbar here. So there's a function called uh, add toolbar. It is here. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, next uh, demo, the offline tile layer. As the name suggests, offline mean, meaning this application doesn't need internet connection. Uh, certainly it doesn't have to have the map with the server. So I can zoom in, zoom out, and the data set is uh, deployed into this local uh, web container. The purpose, the use case of this demo is you know, because the all of those tiles are stored locally, deployed in this local uh, web container on my laptop, I can just uh, take my laptop with me to the field with no internet connection, but only that laptop with me and see the maps. So you may ask, how, how did you get those uh, tiles? Well, we have a feature in the uh, map with the server See here, I could use uh, this utility, map manage tile layers, and uh, that's the tile layer I want to use. And I want to uh, create a uh, area, for example, uh, I draw area of interest somewhere here. Normally you would spend uh, your time to uh, identify the area and also the zoom levels you are interested in. And then I click the ex export the tiles. I need to cancel here. If I click continue, it will generate the tiles if they are not already cached. And then there will be a download link. So I can just grab that link, download the data, and then deploy it into my local uh, web container. It will be uh, ready to use uh, offline. If you look at the code, it's, it's here, offline. It's a tile layer, and I tell, tell it it's a local tile layer, and the image URL is here, so they are stored locally. I don't need anything else to display the map. So with this, let's move on to next. Here maps. <clears throat> the tile layer comes from uh, external source from here. And the map API brings the tiles to display it here. And you can switch to different kind of uh, theme to support uh, the map API as the support to the features in here. 
if we look at the code, it's here. Let me just show you uh, a PowerPoint slide here. It's a here, tile layer, and then you need to um, get the app, app code and app ID from here. And Map API doesn't provide this. And those attributes, you just uh, set it the way you want. And then the application would be ready uh, to be consumed by your clients. Okay, that's for the here, tile layer, and for the OSM, OpenStreetMaps. That's what it looks like. And so we can, let me. And if you look under the source, it is here. That's the only line you need to change to uh, create a uh, OSM tile layer instance and add it to the map. So the map will be displayed. Okay, so that's for the uh, tile layers. And uh, for those five tile layers, only this one, the custom tile layer, it needs the map with server to provide tile services. All the other uh, four demos, they don't, uh, the map API can work standalone without the presence of map with server. Okay, now let's look at the first of the uh, vector layer demo here. In this demo, uh, it shows the uh, US state population and population density. So what we see on the map, there are three uh, layers. The, in the background, the base map is a, a tile layer comes from Oracle Maps Cloud Service. And then the color-coded polygon is the uh, state, uh, state population density. So if you look at here, California, the population uh, density is 190. Montana is a five per square mile. And the color code is given by this, uh, let's see, by this uh, legend from zero to 10 is in green and all the way to the orange is over 500. And if you want to see all of them without uh, the total population layer, the total population is on top of the uh, population density. I just use this vector layer control to turn it off. So we can see that. And we can, if we click on Massachusetts here, it, uh, population density is more than 700 people per square mile. Okay, we, we turn this uh, total population layer on and we click on California. The info window shows the total population of California is over, is close to uh, 30 million people. And in uh, Washington, click on this uh, circle, it's around uh, 5 million. So the on top, that's the total population layer, and it is represented by the circle the size is determined by the total population of each state and labeled with the state abbreviation for that. So that's the, uh, the map. And if we look at the uh, code, uh, it is like this. Okay, that's the uh, state labels. The background the tile layer, you see a new form of that, and we provided additional parameter. We are using the BI world map light. The default, if we don't spy, don't provide this parameter, the default is always the world map uh, tile layer from Oracle Maps Cloud Service. 
and so that's the uh, the base map, the background map. And on top, we added the density layer, and then added the marker layer. The density layer is defined here. So it is a vector layer of type G DBC in a map APIs term. The JDBC meaning the client provides a SQL string to be queried against the data source. And the map with the server, the host is and this URL. And the rendering style is defined by this function, get color scheme. And the attributes to be used to determine which color to use is the uh, population density per square mile uh, in this case. So if you look at the color scheme, how that one works, just give you the uh, general idea without going too much into the details. So it is a color scheme instance created and the number of categories will be five and the classification method is called custom. The, you know, the client side uh, provide the classification of population density to be used with a, a certain color. You could use some others like equal, you know, the data range will be equally divided or a logarithm to uh, bring down the larger data uh, range into a, a relatively numer a smaller data range in numerical values. So for the custom data range, that's the population density uh, range of, uh, is broken down into five categories. It's hard coded in this demo, but it can be manipulated by providing a UI component. Let the UI change that. So that's for the color coded population density. And for the marker, marker layer, it is also a vector layer of JDBC type, meaning SQL string and data source and the uh, map with the server URL. And the uh, rendering style is we'll be using variable marker and the value to get to determine the uh, marker will be the total population. So the variable color is defined here. So variable marker is a circle and the circle will start at the size 30. Uh, every time goes into the next category, it will be increased by 10 pixels. And there are total six uh, classes to uh, classify the uh, total population. And the uh, classification method here is using equal, in, meaning uh, the total range from low to high, total population is e equally uh, divided into six categories and each one with a different uh, circle size. As for this one, now let's uh, move on to the next data pack. This one, if I see I move my uh, mouth around on the map, the map is a California county's uh, pop, uh, population, total population. And the background map is uh, a tile layer. So if I move the cursor, uh, move my mouse around, uh, when I stop on top of a county, there's the uh, two tip that showed the county's name. This one is Sierra, population 3000. And this one is uh, Santa Clara. Total population is more than 1 million. So now let's look at the code. And that layer, 
uh, what we see is a type vector layer and the vector layer is type of data pack in my PA size term, meaning there will be a URL pointing to a GeoJSON dataset. That dataset contains the spatial and non-spatial data. And those the, the dataset will be used to render the, uh, the map. Uh, for the GDBC, you know, you see the SQL string the uh, data source and uh, you saw that. And actually the info will be used to query uh, against the spatial database by the map with the server. And then eventually the uh, map API brings the GeoJSON data from the server to the browser. Here it's just get that data set using the URL. And the uh, Tool tape, see here, the uh, client side, I mean, this application provides a customized uh, function to manipulate the tool tape. You can specify the title, the contents of the tool tape, the look and feel, and it also has, uh, it specified the hover style. So when we hover on a uh, county, the style changes, and the move away, it changes back. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, next one, style bending. This one, we only see two vector layers. One is for a state, it's polygon layer. Another one is for customers, a point layer. Uh, we don't see a tile layer. It doesn't, the application doesn't have to have a tile layer. And uh, the focus of here is style bending for the uh, Customer layer, the point layer, is only a point being rendered by a circle. But the circle, see, they are in different color and size. Pink is for account manager, Alex. And the orange is for account manager, Max. So it's a Max, not the Max. And the size of circle, it is determined by the sales amount to that customer. The smaller one, see here, it's 0 0.3 of sales to that customer. And the larger one, here is 154. Now let's look at If we just look at the binding, focus on the binding part, there are some other features uh, such as uh, such as the projection brings the uh, Alaska and the Hawaii Islands closer to the mainland US. That's a special projection, so we have that feature, but we just focus on the uh, uh, data binding here. So look at here, it is the uh, It is a vector layer of data pack type, and the customer data is stored in this file, can be fetched with, via this URL. And the rendering style is a circle marker. The circle marker is defined here. It's just a circle. See here is a type of circle, but we bind two things. One is, see the circle marker? Its size is determined by the measure column and using a function, uh, size format to determine the size. And the fill, the color pretty much for the uh, circle is determined by the account manager and using a uh, custom function provided here. And we don't need to go into the details, uh, yeah, those uh, functions. Just give you the idea of how powerful it is for a simple uh, circle to represent a data set. We could you know, change its color and size according to uh, given attributes. Now let's look at the next one. Uh, vector layer drill down. 
you know, behind the scene, uh, the browser now is preparing, preparing the data set. See here, the server is quite busy. It's, uh, it, now I think it's ready. The uh, data set is pretty detailed. Lots of vertices for each polygon of the states uh, of the US. And so it, it would take some time. And for real application, uh, I would first to simplify the data set. So it wouldn't need that much detail to just show a polygon of a state. And what I'm showing here, the drill down feature is, I see the big Texas state. And for that's for the popul uh, population density. If I want to see the each county's total population of the uh, this state, I can just right click, and then it will bring in another layer. That's for a uh, county's total population. If I click, see here, county's name feature and the total population is close to five thousand, and here, another county and a larger population. Small population, large population. I can get the details from the info window. If I want to see another one, then I just click this one or another one. If I need to, I could even just uh, bring another level of uh, drill down layer to, uh, to the UI to support that. But here we have uh, this feature to just uh, drill down into county level of a state. If you look under the code, it is here because I know the right click triggered that drill down. So see here, the uh, listener for right click event will invoke that uh, function and what that function does is the right click handler it creates a, a vector layer of type JDBC and then the SQL string the data source and the, uh, the map with the server location so it will bring the data in GeoJSON form and then the uh, map API will render that on the client side to show the map. That's for the drill down feature. Now let's move into a new topic, the dynamic tile layer. Dynamic tile layer, as I explained briefly, uh, it is different from the tile layer and also different from the vector layer. If you look at here, I'm trying to display a tile layer. The, uh, the server is quite busy, see here. I guess it's finished. Yeah, it's still working. No, this is a development environment. There are some activities that go on and uh, with limited uh, computation power. It's not a, sta a staged uh, server for uh, providing services. So it takes some time. The, once it is here, you are going to see there are uh, on top of the background tile layer, uh, we see the dynamic tile layer. And the dynamic tile layer has two layers. One is for the population density of the counties and also the big cities. And also you see the info window looks like it's similar, right, to the uh, vector layer. Uh, it is because we have a feature to support this. The server not only generating the image tiles, it also generating a uh, companion data set. We call that UTF grid. It comes together with the image tile and providing the attribute info. So when I click, I get additional attribute info. And it, normally you don't, uh, you don't have this for a tile layer. And also, the big advantage is, as I mentioned, they are uh, fresh and the map is fresh. For some applications, it's quite important because you want to get the data 
the fresh up to the minute when you display the map. Now let us, let's look at the code. Here is the code. The uh, tile layer, uh, you, you see probably, you noticed a new tile layer, new look. It is from uh, Oracle Maps Cloud Service, the BI world map. That's the that's that layer. It's not the world map, not the BI world map light. And for the dynamic tile layer, we added two layers, the counties and the cities. And they are here. And you see for the county, the uh, uh, population density for counties, the client side code defines the uh, styling and some other uh, attributes or columns of the database to be used to get the data to render the map. And eventually, it will use the info prepared to uh, send a request to create a dynamic tile layer with the uh, properties and some other uh, request attributes. We we'll create a dynamic tile layer instance. In that process, it will send a request from the client side to the server with like a styling uh, specs, uh, data sets to be used, columns, that type of thing to the map with the server. Map with the server will get the data from Oracle database, make the map, uh, return to the client. The map API will show the, um, the map very fresh. And also you could get the additional uh, attributes by click that uh, because it provides a, a companion additional non-spatial attributes. Now let's uh, look at the uh, last one, the uh, ge geometry editing. Uh, this one is connected to a database, the real time. I show you uh, here. So the uh, three themes are prepared and each theme has a table, very, very simple theme. And there may be no data for some tables. Uh, at this moment, but I'm going to create that. Those three uh, layers here will be showing here. Let me make it a little larger. For me to create and edit the spatial features. And I, it can, they can be synced to the backend Oracle database. If I, let's see, I want to create some uh, utility poles. I just draw the point type here, draw, and then I just draw the point here. Let's see here, another one, another one, another one, another one. And I want to save them into a database. So here, success, it's saved. And then if I refresh, it will bring the data from the database to the client side application here. If I want to create a line, utility line, so I want to snap to the utility pose. That makes sense. And then I'll draw the line. See here? Snapped to each pole. Let's stop here. And I save it to database, saved. If I refresh it, they will be uh, all displayed here. Fresh data from the database. Anyone uh, who has access to the database can uh, get the updated data. Now I want to create a polygon, let's see. And the polygon wanted to snap to the line layer. Use the uh, utility line as a edge of that. I guess that from here, 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 here. And then close it. And I save it. Saved. If I need to edit, for example, I want to edit this polygon and then I can edit it. Polygon, I want to do some editing and then I want to edit this polygon so I can 
okay, if I think I'm done, and then I just save it. And this moment I think I'm done for this, okay. So that's for the, uh, let me make sure I saved it. Oh yeah, saved, no change, I refresh. So everything is synced to the database. Okay, with this, I would uh, like to ramp up uh, my demo. And from those demos, uh, I think if you are new to your map API, you get a sense about what the map API look like. And you, if you have experience using map API, I hope you get something interesting from the dynamic tile layer and also from the uh, geom geometry editing. Okay, with this, I'd like to uh, hand it back to uh, Carol. Okay, thanks, Song Lei. Let me just share my screen. So I hope from his demos, you get a sense for the powerful capabilities in terms of the mapping uh, functionality that you can do yourself. Uh, let me just find my... And these will be available to you. We'll be putting them up. Let me just go to... Yeah, given the time, I actually just uh, showed you a small fraction of the capabilities of Map API. There right, a there's a lot more. And um, of course, if you have more questions or as you go through the demos, um, if you want to practice, just let us know if there is any, uh, any questions we can answer um, or help you out with. Um, we have seen some questions in the Q&A. Are there any other questions right now that anybody has before I just go to a couple more slides. Okay, let me just go into the resources. Um, most of you, well, not most of you, but some of you are aware of uh, what we have available already uh, online, but there's a spatial features homepage that you can go to, map visualization. There's, there's lots of things here, YouTube channel, a uh, lot of good tips and tricks on our blogs. So feel free, please, to uh, Go to these resources for more information or contact us directly. I do want to point out that our next session in June will be on June 24th and it will be getting started with Spatial and Oracle Cloud pre tier. So that's coming right up and um, we'll probably have a Spatial Studio one also uh, next month or maybe in July. Uh, and also you can go here, as I said earlier, to subscribe for updates so you know when they're coming, uh, the future sessions. Oops. So that's it for now. Um, let me just see if there's anything else that anybody has. Let me just check real quickly here. Um, okay, I think that is it. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Hong Lei, for some great demos. There are, uh, again, they'll be up, ready for you to practice with, and I hope you take advantage of Spatial in the Database and come up with some really cool apps. Thanks for uh, participating, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you, bye.